If you wanted an EV, you haven't had much choice until this past year or so. And Tesla, from out of nowhere, has dominated the beginning of this EV revolution for the past decade. And they look to continue to rack the legacy automakers in this EV future as well. But unfortunately for Tesla, the old school manufacturers are now finally dipping into their war chests to combat the inevitable future. Hyundai, Ford, and GM have upped their game recently, and now it's Honda and Toyota's turn. Both of these mega Japanese automakers have been behind the curve with EV production. $10 billion is about to change all of that. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, my name's Kirk. I cover Japanese and Korean cars, so if you're into that, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon. I got a lot coming for you guys the second half of this year. So today we're really gonna focus on the big battery announcements and investments from Toyota and Honda, starting with Toyota. So we're at the global Toyota page. Toyota's vesting 730 billion yen in the Japanese and US battery production markets. This is going to add 40 gigawatt hours of production capacity to meet the growing demand for battery electric vehicles. They didn't say hybrids, they didn't say plug-in hybrids, they're specifically talking about fully battery electric vehicles here. What is 730 billion yen? It's 5.6 billion dollars. The exchange for the yen though is not favorable for Japan and it continues to slip. I think it's at the lowest point it's been uh, since the late 90s. That'll probably be a good thing when Japan opens back up, I'm able to visit, my dollar will go a lot farther. So these battery packs in Japan and the United States for Toyota will be a beginning to be put into vehicles in 2024 through 2026. I don't want to put a specific time frame on there, but as early as 2024. Now they're proud to talk about the Toyota production system, which pretty much everyone has emulated to make their production lines better, more efficient, to build better products and to reduce waste essentially. And production lines are more efficient than ever, especially when you go battery electric. Just ask Tesla. They're extremely efficient at producing electric vehicles are a lot easier to manufacture, as long as the battery minerals aren't too hard to acquire, right? Toyota also intends to further strengthen its competitiveness and invest in the training of personnel engaged in battery production and the passing down of Monosukuri manufacturing skills. In Japan, approximately 400 billion yen will be newly invested in the Himeji plant of the Prime Planet Energy and Solutions. You gotta remember, Prime Planet Energy and Solutions is a joint venture between Toyota and Panasonic. Panasonic really only works with a few other auto manufacturers, of course, Tesla. And we're going to talk a little bit about those two companies, Panasonic and Tesla, later in this video. So back to this Japan investment, 400 billion yen and PPES. You also have PEEV, which I don't think PEEV is mentioned here because I think PEEV is the other joint venture between Panasonic and Toyota. And that's mainly for like hybrid battery packs. So PPP. PPES is largely for plug-in hybrid, I'd say, and fully electric situations. Anyways, Toyota plants and property are going to be invested in as well. On well, the United States, $2.5 billion will be newly invested in Toyota battery manufacturing in North Carolina. That plant wasn't supposed to open until 2025, and it still might, but they're dumping another $2.5 billion. I think it was around a billion initial investment, and now they just like tripled it essentially. The North Carolina plant is 90% owned by Toyota Motor North America, and then 10% by Toyota Susho. All right, so we're switching over to the Toyota newsroom in North America. So two and a half billion invested in the North Carolina plant. But here's a cool thing. We're, we're learning a little bit more with the, the uh, employment of people. So we're adding 350 additional jobs to this battery site. And you can see them clearing ground. Look, it used to be forest. Whenever I see ground clearing like this in the name of being eco-friendly, I have to laugh to myself because this doesn't look good for the environment. Gotta look at the big picture, right? Anyways, let's keep reading. Toyota's global investment climbs up to 5.6 billion supporting electrified effort. So the addition of 350 jobs brings a total employment of approximately 20, 2100 in North Carolina. This facility in 2025 will produce batteries for hybrids and battery electric vehicles. And also you have to keep in mind, there's, I wouldn't be surprised if plug-in hybrids are included in the umbrella of hybrid electric vehicles. So last year, Toyota announced 8 trillion Japanese yen or $70 billion for electrification. So what we're seeing today, the around 6 billion or so is a part of that 70 billion investment. So in 2021, in partnership with Toyota Susho 
announced the new Liberty location with an initial investment of $1.29 billion for the battery production and creation of 750 jobs. With today's announcement, the North Carolina plant's total investment is nearly $4 billion. So we're going to take a look real quick of the manufacturing for Toyota here in North America. And we know that this North Carolina battery plant, which is the focus of this investment, at least here in North America, you have that huge investment over there in Japan as well uh, with Prime Planet Energy Solutions. So what do we have going on here? Well, this is going to feed their Kentucky plant, which is the largest Toyota plant in the world. It's going to feed their Indianapolis plant. And right, that, right now we have the Highlander and Sienna built there, but we're also going to have the Grand Highlander and uh lexus txp built there by the end of next year so more batteries going to be sent to indianapolis as well you also have Minis uh, mississippi where they built the corolla then up here they build the rx the nx uh, lots of other things that are going to be needing large batteries especially those plug-in hybrids for the 450h plus rx and nx they need to have somewhere to make those batteries and bringing them from japan just doesn't make sense they might as well send the whole whole battery with the vehicle and that's what they do so until we can produce plug-in hybrid batteries from this north uh, north american battery plant in north carolina we won't have that many plug-in hybrid toyotas i don't think 2025 is going to change the landscape of toyota especially here in north america and i also talked about panasonic now panasonic is building a huge battery plant in kansas now why would they do it in kansas when they mainly manufacture batteries for tesla tesla is down here of course we have giga austin their new headquarters uh, we also have uh, the one in nevada i believe which is really far from kansas as well so why would they why would panasonic put the battery plant so far away from austin well because panasonic works so much not only with tesla but with toyota so this place in kansas is in a good spot here it's fairly efficient to get batteries down to Austin and look how close it is for them to divvy out batteries to Toyota's plants over here just east of Kansas. Now one day when they also want to make battery electric pickup trucks, it's not that far from Austin uh, if they want to use Panasonic batteries. But I think the majority of the batteries they're going to use could very well be from this manufacturing plant in North Carolina. Our last Toyota article before we head into Honda here, Toyota to hike price of steel supplies for parts makers by up to 30%. Yes, steel is getting more expensive. Steel accounts for around 50% of the material cost of the car. So does that mean the cars are going to get continue to get more expensive? I, I don't see why not. I'm not going to go too much into this article, but just know that Toyota not only supplies their cars, but Toyota supplies a lot of the Japanese industries with steel i wish that was better news um heading to some really exciting news just as exciting as the toyota news i got this news while i was in new york uh covering the new acura precision ev concept and honda talked about this while i was there the acura honda team so lg energy solution and honda to form joint venture for ev battery production in the u.s so toyota has a joint venture with panasonic for a lot of their batteries and then you also have Honda here. And why are they picking a Korean manufacturer to team up with to create batteries? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it. Th the most obvious reason is going to be, hey, they're using LG slash Ultium batteries. That is a collaboration with General Motors, right? But they're using LG with their first battery electric vehicles in collaboration with Gen GM. So you have the Prologue that will be you using a LG slash Ultium batteries. And you also have the ZDX Acura's first electric vehicle in 2024 that will be using batteries from LG. So why not just continue? And then you also have the dominance of LG provided by the visual capitalists here. CATL out of China at over 32 and a half percent of the world's supply of battery electric vehicle batteries. And then you have LG out of South Korea, massive. Now, if we talked like 10 years ago, Panasonic was like by far the most dominant manufacturer, but the Japanese manufacturers are very, very, very conservative. And it will be interesting to see if Panasonic will ever get that sort of traction again with having that much dominance. Now, does it mean Panasonic is no longer producing as much batteries? Absolutely not. They continue to scale up, 
but they cannot scale as fast as the Chinese and Korean companies, it seems like. We also have Samsung and SK uh, building plants here in the United States, working with tons of other manufacturers. And then you also have Toyota working with BYD over here, and BYD also supplies a ton of plug-in hybrids and fully electric vehicles for their own BYD vehicles in China. So Toyota working with these top companies essentially here, and we have Honda working with LG here at the bottom left. What will be interesting is what will Honda use for the battery electric vehicles coming out of Japan? Will they work with LG some way, somehow? It's a possibility, but most of the battery electric vehicles from Honda in 2026, that's when their the e architecture from Honda comes out in 2026, uh, and Acura's will be built on that as well. But I'm assuming those are all going to be here in North America. So let's talk about LG Energy Solution and Honda to form joint venture for EV battery production. And this is for lithium ion batteries in the US, not only for Honda, but of course Acura, just for the North American market. So LG ES and Honda will invest a total of $4.4 billion to establish a new joint venture plant in the US. The plant aims to have an annual production capacity of 40 gigawatt hours. Does that sound familiar? Because the first article we talked about, Toyota, is amping production up to 40 gigawatt hours as well. That's that's a very uncanny coincidence, I would say. Now they will be using pouch type batteries. We don't know what kind of battery style Toyota will be using. Prismatic would make the most sense because that's what they use with their hybrids, for example, and I think with their plug-in hybrids and maybe even with uh, their fully battery electric vehicles like the BZ4X. It's really hard to say, but I think they're the more the more boxy type where LG's always done the, the pouch type as of recent. Unfortunately, Honda and LG have not put a, a location. I'm sure they have either eyed to certain locations and they're working with them to, to narrow down the singular location where this battery plant will be. So early construction of this plant will be in 2023 with the mass production of these cells uh, will be 2025. So kind of along the same lines of where, where Toyota will be with their investment as well with the timeline 2025. And stay tuned because the joint venture is scheduled to be established in 2022. Um, you got to keep in mind, they will announce that their joint venture is coming, but they don't have like the names for it. They don't have the personnel hired to run this joint venture yet. So where would Honda be putting this plant? Well, shoot. I mean, Ford's got some going in Kentucky, right, with Blue Oval. Um, and I think that would be a great place for Honda uh, to put their battery manufacturing plant with LG. Now, headquarters for Honda is all the way out here on the west coast of California. Um, they also produce the HRV and other, other vehicles for North America down in the, the Celaya plant. But I think somewhere in the heart of Kentucky would make sense, maybe even West Virginia, so that they can send batteries to the huge plant in Canada. Uh, you also have the big plants in Ohio as well, Indiana, and then you also have one down here uh, in the Lincoln Assembly plant in Alabama. So are you guys excited for the Japanese manufacturers to get into more electrification do you is that something you want are you looking for more competitive products are you looking for battery technology to mature a little bit are you looking for prices to fall on evs there's so many are you looking for infrastructure to get better what are you looking for in your next ev do you think uh you'd be more willing to buy from a japanese manufacturer like honda or toyota or are you interested in the aria coming from uh nissan this year and hopefully I'm trying to get my hands on that vehicle. So I'll, I'll let you guys know if I'm able to get into the Aria first drive like I was for the Nissan Z. That was an amazing experience. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. I can't wait for you to sound off down below because battery electric vehicles is a always a fun subject on the channel, whether you love them, you hate them, or you're just waiting for the right one to come along to make the most sense for your needs. I get it. I'll see you guys down below. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and peace out.